Oh, shoot. Sorry. Oh, you are plugged. Welcome to a shot in the arm podcast. I'm Yvette Raphael. And I'm Ben Plumley. And this, of course, is a podcast about innovation and equity in global health. And this week we are in Montreal, Canada, reporting from actually on the last day of its 2022. Ben. I know. This is, thankfully, our What Did We Learn wrap up episode. And we are thrilled to be joined by friend of the pod, Vuiseka Mubula. Dubula. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, sorry. <laughs> the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, right, we are so tired. Yeah. We are so oh, tired. Yeah. <clears throat> but so, I'm sure, I, I trust that you could say Dubula by can, now. You know Vuiseka for more than I six know, years. And I can't get your name right. Dubula. Yes. I'll Dubula. add a click and the uh, and you'll be fine. Okay. I, <laughs> okay. And then, but, but we're also joined by new friend of the podcast and the head of the Frontline AIDS mission here at AIDS 2020, Lois Chingandu. Lois, welcome. Right. I got that. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. So, lovely. what did we learn? I can't remember find my notes. Here we are. Uh, uh, so what were your highlights? Ask, what no, were your highlights? Uh, uh, not what do we learn. When you ask that question, you must ask Vuiseka, what did she teach? <laughs> That's what did I you teach? teach? Yes. What did I teach? What did we teach? I think we've taught people who have forgotten mm -hmm. that AIDS, deaths, we haven't done enough mm. to prevent and treat AIDS deaths and prevent deaths. Um, we also have reminded people that you know HIV prevention still must anchor our response. And there are two modern science products that have arrived in the last two years that needs to be funded and needs to be accessed. One of those is Dapeverin Ring which is a game changer in terms of, you know, female controlled products in the hands of young women in Africa, but also carbotagravir, long acting injectable, but we're still talking about it. It's approved yet not accessible. In the big scheme of things, I think the politics of AIDS have slowly faded. We've reminded the conference that there is no talking about AIDS without bringing communities and centering the politics of communities in, in these conversations, starting with the ways in which we have been excluded from this conference and future conferences, because clearly many of the countries are racist, clearly because we are challenging that racism, that structured racism that excludes others from conversations such as this, we are also saying the next conference if it's hosted in racist countries, if it's hosted in countries that do not respect human rights of key populations, we should also boycott it. Mm. That is something that needs to, we need to take a stand. Otherwise, we're going to be pushed around. Mm -hmm. and, and when you refer to racist countries, that's countries that, uh, whether they, I suppose, that whether they're north or south, yes. Yes. that yes. restrict yes. entry to people. Yes. Mm. Yes. That, is, that includes yeah. violations against human rights of human beings, including sex workers who are criminalized, people live with HIV who are criminalized, uh, homosexuals who are criminalized, or, or gay people who are criminalized. You know, every exclusion is included, including black bodies mm -hmm. uh, from Asia and Africa who are not accessing conferences, also in terms of, you know, visas using bureaucracy to, 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 to stop people from coming to conversations and be part of the conversations. Access to resources to go and access. It's not just about uh, the visa, it's also about the inaccessibility of spaces because we don't have the money. I mean, we've all been hit by COVID. Most likely that some people have not been vaccinated. And that also builds on all the, what I think is ra structured racism that has been systematically excluding those who are in the margins. Yes. What did you teach, Lois? <laughs> um, we came to the conference here to talk a, a lot about uh, PPR, which is the pandemic preparedness responses, mm -hmm. because of the lesson that we learned from COVID and how 
in some spaces or in some countries with delayed responses, governments not being ready, not knowing how to act. Mm. But I think in that key message we were saying we need to stop thinking about disease-specific strategies mm -hmm. because <clears throat> new diseases are always going to appear every day. So today it's COVID, tomorrow is monkey pox, next week is something else. Mm. If we continue the way we are going, where each time there's a new disease, we want to form a new structure, mm. a new funding structure, a new mm. governance structure, that's not sustainable. We shouldn't be going that route. So we were really talking about integration. Mm. You know, we need to use the HIV platform mm. to just now start layering new pandemics on top mm. and not create new systems. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. For us, that was really a key lesson. Yes, and I think uh, what both of you bring to this table and to the panel is also to talk for us to think about what these conferences historically have done. And I'm so happy that both of all of us here at the table has has used this conference in its entirety, in its history, mm -hmm. for people to go back, or for policymakers, for funders to go back and rethink about activism and rethink about community and rethink about some of the things that might have been damaging while we were hidden in in COVID. and mm. yeah it's 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 it, it, it was a great conference but it was a reminder that the struggle is just not over yeah. but just not for us i think yeah. we we back on the table again man mm -hmm. i was chatting earlier to your colleague Oratile, because you had launched um, a report on human rights violations, and we were chatting about the tagline for this conference, mm. Follow the Science, mm. which I gotta say I thought was really unfortunate in a way because mm. it misses so much more about what is going on yeah. mm. in the AIDS response, and I think speaks to a challenge that these conferences have, that this you know, at some point is a medical conference with community involvement, um, the kind of community leadership, grassroots mm. work, these things are added on. It's not really mm. part of the mm. original agenda. And I think we mm -hmm. saw that this week. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I agree that the, there seems to be the forgotten piece that science and communities, in this case, the structural drivers, the enablers of making sure that science is, is taken into policy, they have forgotten that it is the community that called for the science mm. to inform the response. Mm. Now it's the science before. It's mm. like the science is leading. Mm. They have forgotten what enables the science to be practiced in our own countries. Mm. And this conference reminded them because the fact that we named things, we named racism, mm. we named the political economy of this, the, this pandemic, mm. allows people to see that it's not just biomedical. Let's not allow ourselves to fall in the trap of going back in the old, good old days where we only spoke about AZT and we didn't talk about the system, we didn't talk about the staff, we didn't talk about the community. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this was a reminder. In fact, it made a lot of people uncomfortable mm -hmm. because, I mean, naming racism in an AIDS conference is not always possible. Yeah. In, because the UNA is, in, for all its flaws, UNA has allowed that conversation to happen because they've called out inequalities. Yeah. But the science in the UNA is missing. Mm. Let's be honest. Yeah. So now, the UNA needs to find that anchor in bringing that science and this politic mm. together and find the place where they two met instead of them seeing as sep seen separate. as separate. Yes. Most definitely, and I think we at that pivotal point, and just like Ben says, it's, it's unfortunate that it says follow the science. Follow the science is, for me, almost feels like a drag. For who? Are, mm. are we being coerced into believing in, in science? Mm. But because the science is giving us, and I've got, I'm going to bring this up, the science is giving us different data when we speak about the ring, but still, are we, are we following the science? Exactly. And and whose <laughs> science? Exactly. And whose science? We are following so they the should science have, right now. Yes, they should have just yeah. changed the, uh, you know, the title of the conference yeah. and tagline, whatever it is, yeah. to something else because we came here with the ring light. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes. I think that's an, also an effect of COVID. COVID has been driven by science, right, in the way in which our countries have responded. <coughs> and COVID, sense. yeah, people are coming from that effect and they feel like it's okay. We have said to people, you've forgotten communities in the COVID response. Mm. And they, the, AIDS com the AIDS conference kind of tagged along in their science. Mm. Their science is not the leader. 
No, mm. the science so should never. People. It's so not people. the only thing that we need, and I think that we're not learning. So we need to unlearn for yes. us to move yes. forward. Yes, and, and 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 not think communities are stupid. Yeah. You yeah. know, because follow the science. Okay, it takes. It took you a few weeks to a few months to develop a vaccine. vaccine. We're waiting for the AIDS vaccine. Why is Wait. it takes so, so long? Exactly. Yes. We yes. want to follow yeah. that yeah. science. Yeah. Well, every AIDS <laughs> conference tells us that the AIDS vaccine is ten years away. Every yeah. year. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't that's come, one of, don't that's come. one of the reliable things we know at an AIDS conference. conference. Yes, and we are years. following it. Yeah. Yes, but for COVID, really, for it, COVID, it we got so it within easy. two years. Yeah. It's, so easy. it's yeah. a joke. I, it, it's, sometimes it's a reflection that people are not serious. When they want things to happen, they will happen. Um, when COVID hits, we go back to racism. It mm. hits even where it matters, mm. which is the rich countries mm. and the rich people. Mm. And the money came out to put into research. Mm. HIV has been affecting the poor, the marginalized, you know, the not so important people. And, and that is why the vaccine is taking so long. Mm -hmm. And women. You know? mm -hmm. so and I would, I would not be happy to continue to come to a conference where we keep saying the same thing. Yes. Or we are working on the vaccine. We, will, we hope one day we will find it. Mm. We need to find a vaccine for HIV as yeah. well. And a cure. Yeah. So there were some tough questions asked this week. Mm -hmm. um, actually, pretty much, I think, by people around this table, <laughs> if I'm being honest about it. But, <clears throat> and we can come on to the science. We've spoken a little bit about these prevention technologies. But I think one of the most impactful, shocking sessions was one around decolonialization. And the idea that we have to break almost this sort of liberal, progressive um, racism from the North that tells people in the South, we know what you need, mm. we'll come and do that for you and then we'll go mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. You were both at, the, at that session and indeed other sessions dealing with decolonialization. What did you want us to know here? <laughs> I think, uh, importantly, is the, the systems that uh, colonize, colonize, that's a, yeah, that's a tongue twister. But uh, yes, actually, the systems that it is entrenched in and how we don't want to touch those systems because those systems are, are what make us, uh, make it look like the system is working mm. because now we are scared to shake the system. Mm. What are we going to have after the system collapses? Mm. And I think for me, uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest, Ben, we are on a path of starting to think about it. But just like uh, somebody said to me yesterday, we need to think about how we're going to make it happen. Mm. And we might not reap the benefits of it. Mm. But the most, the biggest joke was somebody trying to find a word Lois, and explain that if we don't include the perpetrators of sexism, racism, uh, capitalism, and patriarchy, what we are doing, we are doing, we are going to have reverse decolonization mm. or colonization, whatever it is. I, I, I just couldn't understand how did we get there, mm -hmm. and and it happens that people create, you know, push back by creating yeah. words yeah. to fight against, mm. and that is again the system yeah. to fight against something good, and I think. And I'm going to be honest, I think the white people in the conference were uncomfortable, but I think they were listening, especially our colleagues. And uh, every single one of them came to me and said, if it, that was brave, none of them said, we no more going to fund you or something mm. like that. Mm. Yes. Look, Ben, I, oh, sorry. The, the reason why the decolonization discussion needs to happen is that it's, it's not going to benefit just us. Mm it will benefit even mm. the West. Mm. Mm. Because the way development has been going, we ha all have to get to a point where we accept that it's not really getting us where we need to get mm -hmm. to. Mm. If this model was working, by now there would be no more development work to do in Africa. Mm. We have been there for years. Mm -hmm. What is it that we are doing? Mm. Which country can we point to where we can now say we can exit because development has worked. Mm -hmm. Development has not worked because the systems are wrong. Mm -hmm. The systems were, are embedded on racism mm -hmm. and the uh, marginalization. Mm -hmm. And we have to get to the table and, and both say, because we, didn't, we all didn't create the systems. We all 
um, inherited them. Mm. So why can't we have the discussion, both black and white, to say this system is not working? Mm -hmm. How do we revamp yes. the system mm. so that we can have true development? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You were going to say? I, I think Louis is right that the, the, the way in which we are going on with the AIDS response is unsustainable. Yeah and it will definitely collapse at some point mm. if we are not on the verge of mm. it. Mm. Because definitely we are in competition with new, with new emerging pandemics yeah. that needs more priority. Yeah. In HIV and TB will be deprioritized as we have seen in the last two years. Mm. But within that, we know that eventually racism will win if we don't continue to challenge it because it's the very same people who will be affected by the inequalities, mm -hmm. by the same racism, even if it's a new emerging pandemic. Mm. But there's work to be done with, with, with the North in the sense that first they have to acknowledge the problem. Mm. I think there lies a problem even amongst us mm. in this conference. Mm. I don't think we are on the same, we're on the same boat. Mm. There are people here who are very comfortable to ride on the uh, colonizing way of working mm. because it privileges them, it, it, pushes, it puts them in, a position, in positions of power and they don't want to check in with their power and their privilege. We too, on the receiving end, have to also unlearn do a lot of uh, decolonizing ourselves in the way in which we've also some in one way or another have accepted the status quo, in fact perpetuate mm. because yes. our, we have been conditioned yeah. by many, many years of colonization and it's not going to take one epidemic to do this, it's systematic, but we have to start somewhere. And I think the more we continue to do these conversations in these conferences and bring other allies intersectional so that we don't fight decolonizing in health and then we must face the same thing in policing, face mm. the same thing in education mm. because we are faced with the same thing. Yeah, mm. Our young people are already feeling traumatized. Mm. I'm talking about the generation after me. Yeah. My gener generation before me was crying of the same thing. I cried of this. The my daughter who's 16 is mm. ex experiencing racism today yeah. in schools. Yeah. And so I think once and for all, if HIV allows us the space to speak about this openly because we have the power, mm. I believe many people, uh, we inspire a lot of people in the public health that HIV actually taught us a lot of things. Now we have that power. We can claim that we can grab the mic. Let's use it. Thinking about other ways in which we can use the same narrative to break all these discourses and saying racism must fall everywhere. Yes. And it starts in public health because yes. we have a voice and we have power. Yes. And I, so I think as a white person who's been thinking and living a lot of this mm -hmm. over the last few years, mm -hmm. just, just a couple of reflections. I mean, we closed down Pangaea Global AIDS because it made no sense mm. to continue mm. to have a headquarters in Oakland, California, mm. where most of the work was happening either in Zimbabwe mm. or in Southeast Asia through, through China. So mm. we did the tough thing and it mm. was painful. It mm. was really painful. Mm. And, and I think the other observation I'd make is that, you know, I would be, I think, the first to say that I am still racist. I am still um, living the context mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you referred to, Lois, mm -hmm. that, that that's what I was yeah. brought up with. Mm -hmm. And it, it yeah, mm -hmm. and it is hard yeah. to break that narrative. Mm -hmm. But this is where I think HIV shows us mm -hmm. the way. All of us would agree now that we can't end yeah. HIV yeah. without making sure that the communities most affected by HIV not only have a seat at the table, yeah. but are leading it. Mm. The logical conclusion of that has to be that women in the global south, that men in the global south, key populations, trans communities, mm. gay people, myself, we have to be leading the response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the approach of a very parochial public health mm. Um, uh, thinking that has driven development over mm. the last 50 years, we have to accept that that is over. Yeah. And maybe, just maybe, AIDS 2022 has begun to lift, mm. yeah. opened our eyes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. us Northern progressives, just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also to, 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 you know, I want to say at the moment, because the biggest thing around, uh, you know, 
getting to learn and unlearn is acknowledging mm -hmm. that the fact that I am still racist. Yeah. And I want to not say big up to you, I'm not praising you, but it's, it's a moment here for us mm -hmm. who are always around each other and it's mm -hmm. a moment to say, he is working on it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that is just my view because I think a lot of us need to get to a point because privilege shows up everywhere. You know, we, it's simple things. Mm -hmm. And how do we deal with it and mm -hmm. do that? So yeah, I, mm -hmm. I just thought I'd it's bring that in. It's what you do with your privilege mm -hmm. for me. It's what you do. Do you use that privilege to benefit yourself and further benefit yourself? Or do you use your privilege to acknowledge that there are others whom you can open doors mm -hmm and whom you can call out your own privilege because often, I mean, let's own it, even in the AIDS movement, a lot of our comrades whom we march with do not want to own up to their own privilege. Yes. And this is the beginning. Yes. Not just their privilege, but also their patriarchy. Mm -hmm. yes. Own your shit because it starts <laughs> yeah. there. It starts there. It starts start there. Swearing. Because <laughs> once we start raising the issue of where is the women's contribution in the AIDS response, in the AIDS movement, Everywhere in the world, when you start having that, oh, they want to erase gay men. Excuse me, we have not said anything about gay men in this statement. Mm -hmm. We are just asking, how is it that in the last 40 years, women who have contributed in how we've built this movement mm -hmm. have it's not appeared. featured, have not featured in the writing, have not featured in many of your nice mm -hmm. movies you've been making? That is the work, yeah. that is the work of privilege because you think that your voice and your color and your, 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 your manhood matters and everybody else pain doesn't exist yes. oh, we are good and when we organize it's the women who are organizing yeah. it's the women you are leading their match yeah. Yeah. and you get their voice and you are not owning your own privilege yeah and we're just good enough to bring the masses right to be our people i've been there i, I reminded people in the one conference where i was speaking about um we were talking about covid and i said um when covid hit and it was hitting hard we saw developed countries sending aeroplanes to pick their uh, yes, people from countries. Yes. We saw a few privileged uh, blacks getting onto planes because their families are somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Everybody left mm -hmm. and who remained? Who remained to fight COVID mm -hmm. on the ground? The same community? This was the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They pulled their socks. They couldn't look at people dying. They did mm -hmm. what they could. Yes. And when COVID subsided, what happened? The aeroplanes came back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that must yeah. make us stop and reflect. Mm. What kind of development is this? Mm -hmm. How can we ever end HIV when we behave like <coughs> this? Mm -hmm. It means when all things are good, we need to remember who is there and who is going to last forever. Mm -hmm. That's who we must invest in. Mm -hmm and not invest in, in the outsiders who will have a haven and a safe haven somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I won't even, if I keep on with that and how after getting onto a flight, you got a vaccine uh, way before that person in the community had received a vaccine. Mm -hmm. All these things, all these inequalities need to stop. Mm -hmm. I want to look at it through a slightly different lens. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Vu, for putting a pen underneath <laughs> this extraordinary helmet that we yeah. have in front of us. And I'm sure everyone's wondering, what the hell is this mm -hmm. doing here? Well, it is a Ukrainian military helmet mm -hmm. that was brought here by Frontline AIDS partner in Ukraine, the Alliance for Public mm -hmm. Health. Mm -hmm. um, it has, obviously, the yellow and the blue uh, of the flag of Ukraine, and it has some really lovely paintings, hand paintings on it. And the point of it is to help the Alliance for Public Health raise money and uh, purchase mobile clinics that will um, provide health services mm. to people with HIV across the country. Because, of course, the Russian invaders have blown up mm -hmm. a lot of the health facilities. Mm -hmm. And just one final shout out to the San Francisco Community Health Center, which purchased this. And of mm -hmm. course, I'm the, the president of that committee. Mm -hmm. And so okay. I just put it here mm -hmm. as, I think, a, quest, a, a sort of a statement of solidarity. One, mm -hmm. because of just what a partnership Frontline AIDS mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. but also because the issue of solidarity from what we have been talking about right now now um, needs to incorporate communities all over who mm -hmm. are being 
who are suffering from the hands of this old model of development and control. Mm -hmm. Develop development, control, and power. Ben. And, yeah. and I, I, I think it's not just good enough for, for us to put it here, and, I, and maybe you should share where can people continue mm. to donate for it. Mm. And this is way out of what I would have said initially, because of racism and all of that. But we must remember one thing, humanity. When you look at what's happening in Ukraine as an activist, and uh, you cannot just say, Oh yeah, it's good. It's two two white countries fighting mm -hmm. each other. Our humanity is ultimately important here. Can yeah. I also raise that as we are raising the issue happening, what's happening in Ukraine? Let's not forget the invisibilized crisis in other parts of yeah. brown and black people yeah. yes. in Myanmar, mm -hmm. in other countries. In Palestine, of, of, let's you name know? it. Yeah, we need yes. to name all of those yes. because that's yeah. part of global solidarity and not fall in the trap of the hype of the media that only visibilize certain <coughs> sufferings yeah. and invisibilize other sufferings. People in Palestine for generations mm -hmm. have been dying and I think they too must be named as we name those who are suffering and, and us so supporting them. I'm not putting anyone on the spot but I'm just saying they too are asking us why are you naming one suffering and you're not naming others as you name Ukraine name the brown bodies who are dying yes. in Myanmar name the brown bodies who are dying in Palestine mm -hmm. and so that we continue to say Democratic Republic yes. of Congo there you Syria. go there you go yeah. Yeah. there you go so many so, so many people are suffering yes and this is under the rule yes. for going for power capitalism yeah. racism yeah. and all of that yeah. and, and everybody has something to do yes and start with so this, this by and contributing yes. by by contributing but also always recognizing yes. and thanks for v yes. for always bringing that up and mm -hmm. checking us but it brings us back to one of the questions of inequality that i know has driven your concerns about both the depiverine ring microbicide ring and of course um, access to long acting mm -hmm. hiv injectables for prevention and treatment mm -hmm. Uh, a comment that has been made extensively to me as I look at the global security agenda, how we fit health into that, mm -hmm. is that it was fine for these rich countries to throw everything that they had, I think rightly so, into supporting the Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of European countries took a lot of refugees, mm -hmm. exactly the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But they didn't when it came to the previous uh, conflict situations mm -hmm. that you you spoke about mm -hmm. um, and Europe particularly that image of the young Syrian mm. uh, baby dead mm. floating in floating the in the ocean mm. yeah. um, and this comes back to the way in which we provide um, access to medications to COVID vaccines but particularly now as we look at these two prevention technologies mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely. That's your place to have your shout out again for the Depiverine Ring. Yeah, no, definitely. I uh, One of the things, and both of, I think the three of us are passionate about this yeah. method. The and Okay, mm -hmm. the five of us. <laughs> <laughs> Including <laughs> yes, our director. Ev yes. Uh, yes, everyone is, is, is passionate about it because it's something that we, women and black women are qu calling for. But we, it's also not just a a African uh, plea, but it's also a global plea. We, uh, in that same solidarity, do we actively insist that we should not forget black and brown women in yeah. America yeah. who've been with us throughout this and want the ring and the US uh, Federation for Food and Drug Administration mm -hmm. has just decided they, w they would not approve it for their population. Mm -hmm. So we must always remember that we work in solidarity with others. The racist part of it is that because the ring was developed by an African yes, institution, that's, that's the first problem, mm. racism deep down in there. Second, who gets to benefit from the ring is the African brand, brown and black bodies. Again, we're having this conversation about access. Mm. Who makes decisions on access? It's based on racist white people in the North who made decisions around who must get and who mustn't get. I think, too, there lies another structural element that will make ring inaccessible. Mm. It's, ab it's available. At $15, it's a lot. A lot of countries can't afford it. Yes. But if you compare it with Kebele, Kebele is $1,400 US dollars. I was hoping we could have this without wow. mentioning But everybody that. in this conference is like, 
Kebele, ke yeah, yes, we are. Yeah, we are Kebele, we are ring, we are yeah. condom, we are microbicide <laughs> gel, we want everything in the yeah. basket. Yeah. But mm -hmm. let's talk about the inequalities in the way in which we, we demonstrate our alliances. Mm -hmm. Everyone's alliance here is with Kebele. Yes. Because Viv, like really, Viv is located in the United Kingdom. Mm. And who is in the United Kingdom? The white man. Where is the ring developed? In South Africa. Mm -hmm. And who's in South Africa? Yes. The black people. The South. We, we don't expect anything could come out of there. But the price inequalities is so clear. But everybody wants Kebele. Mm -hmm. I want Kebele, but not at, at 1,400. I don't care yeah. who says what. We mm -hmm. want both products at an affordable price. We're not saying free. Both products in the, in the basket because women deserve all of them. So clear something up for me around the science mm -hmm. on the microbicide, on the depiverine ring. Mm -hmm. People will say, and we touched on this earlier in the week, people will say, well, the regulatory data that was in the submission mm -hmm. indicated an efficacy rate of around 35%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Yvette, you have said that, yeah, but if you look at the open label that yes. followed, efficacy Is increased to, to 60%. Yeah, you. about up to 60, 65%. But also, we must also be honest, none of the uh, prevention methods that when filed have high efficacy. I can just tell you that PrEP didn't have such high efficacy. Mm -hmm. And and the big thing around PrEP was who does it work for? I want us to talk about it. Black and brown women are not taking PrEP globally because of how PrEP is an, not an empowerment, a pleasure drug. Mm -hmm. I mean, PrEP is so easy to take for white gay men. It, it, two to one, what to do, prep on demand, there's mm. many strategies, mm. but for me, for Isek and many other people, uh, young people in Africa, prep means something different. It means I have to take it for the rest of my life every day. Mm. So let's, let's talk about some of those things as well. And the ring is one, the one thing that is as mm. liberating mm. For, for, for black and brown women as mm. prep would be for the gay community. Mm. Is it the first time? that we're talking about a product or an intervention where it has been adopted, even if it wasn't 100%, it's not the first time. Let's talk about the removal of foreskins. Mm. Mm. It was 60% mm. reduction mm. of HIV transmission in, in men. We went into that intervention knowing that it wasn't 100%. We took the chance and we said, sure, it's not perfect. It will work for some men who use condoms. Mm. If they don't use condoms, they're standing at a risk of transmission. We want the same thing for women. It's not 100%. They will have a chance of 65% of acquisition of HIV. If it works for some women, 6 out of 10, why not? We it's took something. that chance for, for, for very, very voluntary medical circumcision. Why are we not taking the same but, chance for women? Mm. Yes, but, but Vu also, you, you almost making me my screen, skin crawl because I remember our role in this, and me and you had this discussion many a time. At the time when that was going on, mm. women got on our boots and our techniques, we, we and we organized. said, cervical cancer, if mm. there's a foreskin and we mm. were allies to yes. men yeah. to yes. make sure this becomes yes. available in our country. Yes, so we, we didn't have, boo it. We yeah. didn't boo it. Yeah. And we have a province in South Africa that did not circumcise. Yes. But if you go to KZN right now because of women and the role we played yeah. in that campaign, yes. in that technology, yes. in KZN you would hardly yes. find a force. Yes. Mm. So that is the reason. And yet now we have this issue where are the men? Where, where are the men voices we must rather calling for them. the ring? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the thing that makes me sad is when, when you look at the UN AIDS report, the recent one, and you see how much adolescent girls are getting infected, and you think if you could get the ring to adolescent girls and if they could use to get some protection, is that not better mm -hmm. than nothing? Yeah. Mm. It's, a, it's a comparison between getting something and getting nothing. Mm. And yet we are, we are looking at eight years to 2030. Mm. And if we don't do certain things now, mm. Mm. really, we are going to come to 2030 just knowing that we are going to miss the target. Yeah. Mm. Let me ask you a provocative question, if I may, Lois. Mm -hmm. And it's something I'd, I'd really welcome uh, our other panelist, Yvette, to comment on as well. These, these timelines, these aspirational goals, 
ending a public health crisis by 2030. Does that really help us? Because we're not going to do this. We're not going to end AIDS by 2030. And we're, we've got eight years, and we know we have to invest in a, an order of magnitude mm -hmm. that we aren't doing at the moment. So yeah. are we not just setting ourselves up for failure? The timelines are quite important. It's important that we work towards something. If it becomes open-ended, then there's nothing pushing us. Mm. We need something mm. to choke the fire, fires under us, under our bellies. And mm. that's what the timelines do. Mm. I think the, the problem is the when we set timelines and begin to not take them serious mm. ourselves, mm. Yes. which is what is happening mm. now. Mm -hmm. We set timelines. We, we, in this conference, one of the things I would have really wanted to see is the people talking about how much little time is left mm. to get to the timelines. Mm. I hear people talking about Kabele and saying, yeah, I think we, we can only get it to the communities maybe around 2025. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, like we have the luxury mm. to walk at any pace. Mm. You don't feel that sense of agency that we have eight years. What can we do in mm. eight years to end AIDS? Because mm. we want to end AIDS mm. and we must end AIDS. It's not, it's not an option, mm. you know. Well, look, I see that we have a couple of comments coming in over the wires as we are live streaming. <laughs> Maybe we can connect by the ether with, uh, to our director who might just shout out to us and then we'll repeat it, just what these comments are. Sure, uh, Sembi, uh, watching on LinkedIn, uh, says, very strong advocacy messages you are sharing, watching from Harare. Well done for streaming this conversation. Aww. Oh, thank you, Thembe. Thank you. And there's another LinkedIn user uh, watching from the UK and in awe of your conversations today. Thank you. Nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So here we are. It's the last day of the conference. We're knackered, absolutely exhausted. Mm. Who had a good conference and who had a bad conference? <laughs> So who do you think had a good conference, first of all? Amongst us, the community. Any, I think, well, yeah. I think those, I who, think were here, those who were here carried the burden of those who were not here. Mm. And those who were here made sure that this conference was an activist conference. There were protests every day, sometimes twice. That, for me, revived my spirits because it, it then meant that we know why we are here. We're not here to be complicit to the silence. We're not here to be complicit to the non-agent uh, issue of people thinking we can end this by whenever we can feel like. I think we had the best time. There are people even in this conference that had the worst time. This conference was the most expensive conference. A lot of poor uh, people came here just on the bare minimum, just with a, 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 a maybe staying in a, a very crap hotel, very minimal, uh, didn't have money to, to eat every day. And we didn't have the best P, uh, PLHIV lounge mm -hmm. that had consistent access to food, considering that people were coming from really poor communities. They didn't have the money. I think those folks didn't have the best time. So, Vu, just remind us about the importance of the, the lounge for people mm -hmm. living with HIV. It's been a feature pretty much of every AIDS conference, <clears throat> I yeah. think, certainly since, since 90, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 96 or something like that. It, there were issues beforehand. Yeah. And the importance of it mm. is precisely that it gives people a place to mm. rest, mm. to eat, mm. particularly those that don't necessarily have the yeah. uh, per diems yeah. that mm. others might have. Mm. Uh, the, 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 the lounge... Is me for me, I, I always saw it as an acknowledgement that we are unequal. There are those of us who will come here with no resources, and the lounge is a home for people with HIV to come and have a, a hot meal. I'm not even talking about bread. I'm talking about a hot meal that m often many people don't even have that hot meal back at home. I mean, we're holding conferences in high-income countries who are very expensive. It's, it's clear that we have to acknowledge that. The second... The, even by the fact that the, that lounge wasn't a resting lounge, it was a loud lounge, for me, means that we have forgotten mm. that there are people who are sick who live with HIV who attend conferences. Mm. It, we almost assume by default all of us are virally su uh, suppressed and no one has cryptococcal meningitis here, no one has TB because this is, not their, this is not their place. This is a place of healthy people. 
there's always there's an undertone in the way in which this conference treated people with HIV. It's almost like you don't exist. This is not your conference. That's why we took the mic. The mic was to remind everybody as you start this conference, this is an AIDS conference about human beings and therefore everything must then comply. Mm -hmm. But the lounge didn't comply. In fact, it was a letdown and I hope that the uh, International AIDS Society will be told of this, that never again should we have an AA lounge that does not acknowledge that we come from poor communities. We need food is a basic right. If it's not a basic right in Canada, it's a basic right in South Africa. And therefore, well, let's provide decent meals, acknowledging that people here come here with pittance, if not peanuts, uh, per diems, mm -hmm. incomparable to the same people who are, who are doing the lounge. Some people were here on $100 a day. Others were here on $10 a day. Those who came here on $10 a day, those are the ones that would have benefited from that lounge which didn't exist. The room was there, but nothing was there. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want you to ask See, me a question. I'm going to yes. ask her. I've got to ask, <laughs> ask Yvette a question. Good. What should we ask her? Okay, so here's, here's the thing. Here's the question I'd like to ask you. I think... Mm -hmm. I think African women activists had a great conference. Uh -oh. I think uh -oh. your taking the stage at the start really inspired. Come on. Mm -hmm. I wonder though, Yvette, do you think, and you've, you sort of referred to this a little earlier, do you think that your northern allies the AIDS organizations from the north, the activists from the north, were we supportive enough? Did we have a good conference? Uh -uh. No, you guys didn't have a good conference. You guys need counseling when you go back. And, <laughs> and a lot of work to do. Uh, but most importantly, I think we've, we've, given, we've, set, we've given clear marching orders in our language. Mm -hmm. uh, we've given you clear marching orders that we will not accept the status quo. Mm -hmm. We want things to change. And <clears throat> we want you to go and have workshops on transformation, on decolonizations inside your organizations mm. and start stirring mm. the pot there. Do not leave that burden to the black mm. voice that is already oppressed. And I like the fact that you are the only white person today on this panel. Mm. You know how As we feel. Be. Yes. My and you know right now. <laughs> <laughs> but what we do, yeah, but what we do is try and bring the epidemic as it is. Yes, mm. and, yeah. and, and, and make the, the, fa uh, the topic and the discussion mm. be around yeah. the people yeah. who are, are, are experiencing, mm. and, that is, and that is a good thing. But also, I had a great time having Posi being at this conference. It was just, Yay. because um, Vu, you talk about poverty, you talk mm. about all of the things, and we are known for coming here with a begging bowl. I did not come here with that. I came here to say I have a product mm -hmm. and I want you guys to wear it mm -hmm. and it's empowering and it's a legacy mm -hmm. for other activists. I want mm -hmm. to build the AIDS empire, I want to build the vampire by showing that we mm. are still creative and we still have brains. Some of us, Vu, did you want to be here all your life? No, I no. wanted to be a creative. Mm -hmm. Did you want to be fighting all the time? No. no. So also, <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, that comes naturally. But also to remember, and also to remember, <laughs> that yes, we, we, we can make money and we should be allowed to mm. make money. Mm. We sh should be allowed to sell our goods, and thanks to everyone, everyone including a shot in the arm podcast for for having confidence in in the brand and helping me to build the brand. I have a silent ally, Emily Bess. Hi, Em, for <laughs> for for investing in just Ooh, hi, Emma. this. Yes, for just investing in it and buying the the, the stuff that I make because it's what I wanted to do all well, my life. And thank you for sponsoring the podcast. Yes. Now I know <laughs> you, you need to get to a meeting. Um, Thirty minutes late. Uh, <clears> so I will send deepest apologies to the person you're having the meeting with. Mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. But I do want to have one final question. Sure. Conference gossip. Uh -oh. Yes, <laughs> yes. What have you got to share? Lois, could I start with you? I didn't, uh, I didn't hear anything. Yeah. What did you see? No, the gossip, uh, the gossip I had with someone was... Uh, we talked about 
the question we are asking ourselves is, do we need these conferences mm -hmm. going forward? Mm -hmm. Is this is this the best way of utilizing re mm -hmm. resources that are dwindling? Mm -hmm. And I think we genuinely need to reflect on that. We need to reflect on the length of the conference. We need to reflect on the cost of the conference. Mm -hmm. We are taking conferences to some of the most expensive places. Mm -hmm. Can an international conference not happen in a community? Mm -hmm. Does it necessarily have to be in a big city? I think all these things we need to really start taking seriously. So that, that was my little gossip with, the, with a friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boo? My gossip was from my experience. I actually thought that Montreal will not have the things that we have back at home. Mm. I was not very impressed with certain things. Yeah. I wasn't impressed. The conference knows that the it's hosting people who come from different uh, incomes, right? So I expected that the variations of the food available would accommodate some Africanness mm. in the food mm. if we are expected to be here. But the restaurants we found obviously offered local food, but there was nothing lo local in the food in sense of who are the hosts, how are we going to accommodate. I think they could have done better in getting, going out to Montreal, look for the African yeah. providers, local co mm. community mm. providers who, who mm. make fufu, who make mm. jollof, who make tzadza, mm. to come. And even if they put little hookies in the conference and make it an AIDS conference, it looked very elitist in the food. Yep. Mm. I was not impressed with <laughs> yeah, that. I completely agree. I heard the story about why are we here. Mm. In fact, we are called out by others who are not here. Like, why are you there? Mm. You are there. It's the middle of the seventh wave. Mm. You are there. It's expensive. You are mm. there. Canada did not care about you not during the vaccine. Jesus. Why are you there? So those are the chi 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 you hear. But when people go to, they, they take podiums, they don't say these things. Mm -hmm. And which are critical political issues we need to raise. Mm -hmm. Food is part of this conversation. Mm -hmm. Why did we come and endorse and support and validate a racist country who excluded us from being counted as we need to be, we need vaccines? Mm -hmm. We are here. Yeah, yeah. I just don't gossip and I, I'm known for shooting shots and you know just saying things as it is and I think it's 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 the most beautiful thing about being Yvette Raphael I don't gossip what I say in your face I can say behind your back Ben doesn't believe you and the whole thing I only gossip with him by the way uh -huh. about yeah. other people mm -hmm. you don't gossip I just tell him <laughs> what I think <laughs> Oh, so, so for me, did you, so yeah. the gossip for me was whether to, which footwear, whether to wear uh -oh. sensible, comfortable shoes oh, yeah. or fashion shoes. Uh -oh. mm. And the moment for me was at a reception where uh, one of our friends, Brett Andrews from the Positive Resource Center mm -hmm. in San Francisco, pointed out that someone, a man, was wearing Gucci Moomoo's. And these are basically, I don't know, high-class slip-ons, oh yes. slippers at an HIV yes. conference. At an HIV oh conference. my goodness. And he looks stupid. Yeah. And that's what happens when we have lost ourselves. Aloof. Yes. Disconnected. Yeah. Yes. We've disconnected to the cause. Yes. Okay. Oh my God. Gushy. So that's it from AIDS so 2022, awesome. I know, right? <laughs> Yvette, final words. It's been a pleasure co-hosting with you and I hope we can do more of these. I'm excited She's and I'm, mm. I'm excited mm. and I'm happy and I, I'd like to do this with you again, Ben, and I'm, yeah, let's do it again online. And these guests, they're just out of this world. Okay, well, that's it. She didn't even get my message. I'm she late. didn't get your message. You're, because you're in I'm trouble. not on Wi-Fi. Oh. I sent it and I So think... on that note, we'll close so that oh, Vu yeah, can okay. save her professional relationship Jesus. and get to a meeting that she's probably now, yes, half an hour late for. Thank you all very Thanks much for staying with us. And uh, if you're traveling back home after the conference, travel safe. And if you're home, stay safe, particularly as we enter this next wave of COVID. Mm. And of course, monkeypox. Mm -hmm. So... Subscribe. Bye. Yes. Bye. 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 Bye.